hi everyone and welcome to breakthrough i am always so excited when you join me because i believe that we have an amazing program for you today just as we adjust this camera i have an amazing program for you i know you'd be blessed because you learned so much about creativity and what creativity is all about and how to apply it how to make money based on your creativity. So I'm excited. I'm your host, Sharon, and as I said, as always, I'm so honored and grateful that you can join me. Today our topic is part two of a three-part series on keys to creativity, the stages. To, uh, to, um, um, today we are talking about the stages. Last week we spoke about how do you go about you know, preparing for creativity. What are the keys to creativity? And today we are talking about the stages of creativity. Have you ever wondered about creati the, the creativity of a spider, the ability to, to, to build a, a, a web that's so intricate and, and delicate and beautiful? And have you ever wondered about a bumblebee's ability to fly? Those were th those are natural God-given things in them. Have you ever wondered about the, a, a bird's ability to build a nest? When I look at these things, or how about an ant? An ant can carry like 50 times its weight in load, and it builds colonies that are like cities underground and above ground and on trees and on, on above the earth. So creative, right? What is stopping us from using our, our creativity? Those are animals that don't have a brain like ours. What's stopping us from using our creative ability to do great things? And today we are talking about the, the based on the science of creativity, I want to share with you the few things you can do to make a difference in your ability to be creative and truly make things happen in your own life. Forgive me as I adjust uh, as we go, I hope that's okay with you. So yes, so as we, as you wonder about the creativity of things like an ant or a spider or a, a bumblebee's ability to 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 fly, it's 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 it should not fly. Aerody um dynamically, it's not it shouldn't fly. It's just too heavy. But but yet still it flies. But that's a tiny thing. How about us and our big mind? As I study about the science of creativity and our worth. I wonder what determines one person's worth from another. What determines, let's say, Bill Gates or, or um, you know, Zuckerberg, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. What what determines their worth versus mine? They have a mind just like mine, and they use 24 hours. We no one has more than 24 hours in a day, so it makes me wonder about that. So, if this is your first time joining us. Thank you. I appreciate you. I truly believe that you would learn something as we go here. And I'm encouraging you to send me some love, give me some likes, subscribe to my my channel, uh, YouTube channel, Sharon A. Joseph, and like my page, like this page. And um, I'll be posting things more regularly than I normally do so that you can, one, be abreast of what I spoke about last week and, coming, and what's coming up for, for the following week. And I'll give you hints and tips during the week as well. So I hope you value that. So if you'd like to be my guest or if you'd like me to share your story on this broadcast, I encourage you to email me at BreakthroughTTI at gmail.com. That's Breakthrough T as in tips, T as in tools, and I as in insights at gmail.com. And tell me your story. And who knows, maybe I'll feature it you know, I'll give you a call and I can feature it, feature your story right here on Breakthrough. So who is Sharon and what led me to do what I'm doing now? I think the greatest passion, the, the, the one thing that has happened to me that has truly pushed me to do what I'm doing is the fact that I grew up for most of my life with a major speech impediment. And every week, yes, I will share that with you every single week. Why? Because if you are dealing with something, if you are going through some issue or another, I want you to know that it's okay. 
that eventually you can and will come out. You just got to be de de determined enough and seek in the right place to find the answers you need. So I had a speech Im uh, impediment and I still stutter sometimes. I'm going to show you, you hear it. I speak faster than most people because I think that that was from practice to try and get the words out before I stuttered. And I guess that has left me with the still, the still ability to speak quickly. I'm working on that. Don't worry. But my point is, I didn't think much about myself. I didn't think I can do anything. I didn't think I could ever be anything great because I couldn't say it much. I couldn't say it without stuttering. And that left me feeling really worthless. I was abused. I was rejected. I felt shame like you'd never imagine. I felt insecurity and inferiority. I had no friends go, um, growing up because I was bullied in school and no one wants to be the friend of the girl one who couldn't speak and the friend of the girl who was bullied the most. So I, it, it, it was a pretty lonesome ro road for me. I failed many times in relationships and in business. And as I said before, I had no self-esteem, no self no self-worth. I was a broke Broken girl. Yet, I graduated from NYU. I was on the dean's list. I managed the operations of over 500 people at a, 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 a Fortune 500 company on Wall Street. And I have lived, I, I have you not used, but I have uh, broadcast a live broadcast both in Cleveland and Ohio. And I told you before, I don't share this to boast because there's no boast in me. Who am I? But I share it with you to let you know that no matter what you've been through, you can get over it. You can break through. And you may now be asking, so what is breakthrough all about? Breakthrough is all about deliberately influencing people, you deliberately influencing people with a, a, a sense of excellence impacting the world with excellence in everything and anything you do. It's all about consistently and in, 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 intentionally doing things that bring greatness, learning, making yourself better, investing in you, investing in other people, not just once, but an ongoing consistent thing. It's reaching beyond your basic needs and my basic needs and pains and shames and insecurity and things of the past and truly reaching out and helping someone else. I have found that when I'm going through my worst times in life, when I help someone else, it makes me feel better and somehow I have solutions to my issues and other people are blessed at the same time. So breakthrough is all about doing that, not just living within your challenges, but moving beyond. And as we become and we help others become who they were created to be, we make this world and everything around us a better place to live. It's growing and going beyond who we think we are. My hope for this series, Keys to Create to creativity is one to remind you that it all starts in your mind. It's it's the one thing. If I could forget everything I say, if you forget everything I say and do on this program, and remember this one thing, that your greatness is dependent on how you use this, your mind. That, that That's it. That's the long and short of everything I do say and think. As I study the, the science of creativity and our worth, I wondered, what determines someone's worth? Why does one person get paid, let's say, $1,000 while another person gets paid a million dollars? The answer, I truly believe it's their ability to solve problems through creativity. Your worth and my worth, we, we get that. People ascribe worth to us based on our ability to solve problems, to solve yeah, their problems, other, uh, other people's problems. Think about it. The people who are making the most money generally are the ones who are solving the most, prob the most problems uh, in the world, basically finding solutions to issues around them and in the world. Today's topic is keys to, to, to creativity, but we are talking primarily about the stages of creativity. And I know that the word creativity, you may be wondering, creativity just doesn't sound right. And maybe next week I'm going to change it because we have moved into that point. I'll change it from keys to creativity to keys to you making your ideas bring you money, how to monetize your ideas. I think that's the simplest way to help you understand what creativity is all about. We wonder if we have it. We all have it. Creativity is something that we all have. It's innate. It's in us. It's how we use it that truly 
makes a difference and makes uh, and, and allow us to earn or not earn. We need to recognize that creativity begins again in our mind, in our thoughts, and it comes alive in our words, the things we speak and say, and in the actions that we do, the things we do, before we actually see it with our own eyes. Remember, even God, he said things before he said it. He said, let there be, and then he saw that there was. So I'm encouraging you to know that every idea you have, don't just discard it. Every idea you have could be gold. Now, I, I, I'm sorry, I should rephrase that. Every idea you have may not be gold, but you may have some ideas could, that could truly bring you wealth. So be aware of that. Creativity is basically you, the, the use of imagination or original thought or idea or ideas. Creativity is the use of imagination or original thoughts or ideas. We tend to ascribe creativity primarily to the production of an artist's work. And I am telling you that you don't have to be an artist like a dancer or a painter or a singer in order to be creative. We all have that creative ability in us. So how do we become creative? I'll give you a quick recap from last week's. We just had seven points. I hope you have a pen and paper because this will truly, truly help you to value your ideas and yourself more. A quick recap. One. We need to recognize the importance and the value of our mind, our most valuable asset, and the thoughts that you allow to dominate it. Number two was to invest in yourself, spend more time imagining or praying. It's more important than knowledge. Your imagination is basically God in action. Sounds crazy, right? So imagine more. Number three was to be specific about your daydreams or what you want to accomplish as you imagine. Allow your subconscious mind to go to work to be creative or to create or bring ideas to your forefront. Creativity really starts in our subconscious mind, and we'll talk a little more about that in this week's program. Number four from last week was don't rush yourself or, cri or criticize your thoughts as they come. Just write them down. Number five was do what many find difficult, spend time with your own thoughts. Many people find it difficult to be by themselves and be in a quiet place, no distractions, no phones, no televisions or anything like that. But that's where creativity is born in those quiet, still moments where no one is around and no distractions. So do what many find difficult, spend, times with your own t spend time with your own thoughts. Number six was to always have a pen and paper ready or, or some type of recording device to record your ideas as they come. Number seven was, many of us may be wondering, am I creative? Yes, you are. So the answer was yes, we all have creativity in us and that how we use it truly makes a difference in where we end up in life. Today we are going a little deeper into the stages of creativity and the first, and again, something about creativity, the more you exercise your creative mind, again, the more you bring ideas, the more you use ideas, find solutions to things. Someone has a problem, you think about what the, what the solution could be for that. You've heard something on the news. I wonder what solution can I bring to that issue or problem that I just heard about. So if you, as you exercise your mind, your creative mind, more ideas will come that can truly send you into another level of wealth, of worth, of creativity. It's cumulative. So as you start doing that, doing that simple exercise of trying to find problem, find solutions to problems, you'd realize that your creativity is growing. Fact is, creativity can come out of knowing, of without knowing the stages of creativity, creativity can come out of you. We've all had that aha type moment when you found a solution to a problem that someone else has been dealing with, or you were thinking about something last month, and then all of a sudden you got that aha moment and you found the solution. And many times that solution is the perfect solution. However, to be truly creative consistently, I'd like to share the stages of creativity for you. And again, this is based on extensive research that I was just privileged to learn as, to learn as I go. Um, and yeah, extensive research based on the science of the mind. So the first level of being creative or exercising creativity or using your ideas for profit is one preparation. 
two, incubation, three, enlightenment, four, evaluation, and five, impl Im implementation. Now, I just ran through those really quickly. So how do you really, the first one, how do you really prepare for creativity? If you're now joining us, you are listening to Breakthrough, and I'm your host, Sharon, and today we are talking about the keys to creativity, and we're talking about the different stages of creativity. Well, we all know that before a farmer farms a land, um, any land, that he, be, before he sows in the land, he'll till the soil, he'll plow the ground, and before planting, he, it, that, that's necessary, right? Because when he plants, he want to know that the ground is tilled and ready for what he's about to plant. If we want to cultivate creativity, we also need to know the different stages of creativity. So when I said that the first stage is, is preparation, I have three quick points under that one. The most important tool or insight for effective creative, creative preparation is belief. You cannot accomplish, have, get, own anything that you don't believe that you're worthy of getting or worthy of having. Fact is, even in prayer, we, when we pray, the word says, if you don't believe, you only get what you want when you believe. So belief is so, so critical. The most important tool I, I'm, I'm sharing with you or insight for, you know, for effective creativity or preparation is belief, your belief. Do you believe that you can get this? Do you believe that you can do this? Then the next one is that it's not just belief, because if you're believing that you can't get it, then you wouldn't. But you've got to have positive belief. Positive belief is a soil that's needed for the first stage of creativity. Belief is critical to success of any idea. But again, you want to have positive belief. You've got to eliminate one word from your vocabulary. And that word is the word impossible. This is critical because you need to eliminate the word impossible from your thinking and speaking vocabulary. Because if you want to be creative and birth your great ideas, then you can be thinking impossibility and expecting possibility. It just doesn't work that way. When we think or say it's impossible, our, sub, uh, our subconscious basically goes to work to prove that whatever you're saying is impossible. We need to realize that our use, um, you, you use the same time, effort, and subconscious power or brain power to believe in the possibility as you do with the impossibility. So as you do, as you do, as you go on trying to believe, you've got to believe and prove your subconscious mind wants, if you believe, your subconscious mind will go to work to prove that what you believe is possible. As you do, and as you, and as you think impossibilities, your subconscious mind would also go to work to bring what you're believing that is impossible. Fact is, if you're gonna use the same brain power for possibility and impossibility, so possibility, accomplishment, impossibility, failure. If you're gonna use the same brain power, why not use it for possibility? And kick that word that's called impossible out of your vocabulary. Your subconscious is waiting for you to give it work to do. Why not give it possibility thinking and real work, work that will bring good ideas to and good creative life giving ideas to you. So as you go forward, remember that the first stage in you being more creative in the preparation is to believe. You've got to believe. You've got to have the, basically the, I can do this. I can, no matter what, I can do this. Nothing is impossible. You've got to have that type of attitude. You have a spring of creativity in you and you can bring it to life by believing. Remember that all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. That's Matthew 21, 21, 22. So your belief is really critical to what you receive in life, period. That means that prayers is the very best prayer is the very best way to prepare ourselves for creativity think about it it's unusual and yet, but but it is true the other thing is you've got to be unusual that's the other point under 
preparation. So the first point was believe, that's critical. The other point is that you, you cannot be traditional in your thinking. People who are traditional are just like status quo people, average, average, uh, come say, come saw. But that's not you, you're not like that. You are a creative person, so you cannot be traditional. You've gotta think, you, you've gotta know that it's okay to rock the boat, wherever you are. You've gotta know that it's okay to rock the boat sometimes and be different and do things differently. Average people will always get average results. But again, you're not average. So look beyond what other people are looking at. They are always looking for reasons why something can't be done. I'm saying to you that if you are, if you want to be creative and different, you've got to look beyond that, go beyond average, rock the boat, do what other people are not doing. Again, do what other people are not doing. And that will show your creativity. You are not average. Why act it? Why pretend? Move away from average people. You are above. You are above. Ready to do great things. You can't just sit and just be average. Be bold. Be different. Be who you were created to be. There's so many great things in you. But the only way it will come out is if you be you and not just be what other people want you to be. So be be unique. Be one of a kind because that's who you are. Be imaginative. Imagination breeds creativity. And creativity is basically, not basically, creativity is God in action. So my third point, so one, you've got to believe. Two, be different. Rock the boat. Know that you're unusual and, and be proud of it. And the third thing is to invest in yourself. I will, between your mind and your investment in yourself, I think those are the two things that will trans that can transform anyone's life. Invest in yourself, broaden your horizon, immerse yourself in the subject that, that you want to be more creative about or, fi or find solutions to. Read books, talk to diverse people and cultures and, and, and learn different things. My goodness, it's like a university. Just being on YouTube, you can learn so much. Why not, instead of spending three hours watching television, why not spend one or two and spend one learning something new? Think about it. This does not mean you must only focus on the things that you that relate to what you want to be uh, creative about or the idea you're thinking about. But you, if you want to be more creative, you want to be you want to be able to expose yourself to different things, learn about different things and topics that doesn't relate to it. See, be, why? Because seemingly unrelated topics many times can give you an idea for something that you are currently working on. So to recap, number uh, the, the preparation stage and stages of creativity is one, you've got to believe that all things are possible. B, don't be traditional in your thinking. Rock the boat sometimes. Be different. Think outside the box. They are, and number three was to invest in yourself. Broaden your horizon. Emerge your, immerse yourself basically in that subject that you want to be more creative about or find a solution to. Again, remember that when I talk about creativity, creativity is basically the ideas that are in you coming to life. All information and knowledge can contribute to your creativity or the idea you have to bring it to life. Believe it can be done. Believe that where there is a will, there is a way. Another way of saying that is as long as you're alive, there is hope. That's Ecclesiastes 9.4. It's amazing how life, well, it's not amazing to me because I know that my creator created all that is and that as long as there's life, there's hope. He said it. It's true. As long as you're alive, you can do so many things. If you're dead, there's nothing you can do. All ideas, all challenges are gone. And that brings me to another point. And this is not even part of this. When you're going through challenges, know that you should be grateful because only people who are alive have challenges. If you're dead, all problems are gone. No more challenges. Okay, so number two stage of creativity is the incubation period. The incubation period. An idea is like cooking a good broth or stew or homemade pasta sauce. And the one thing I know about all of these things is 
they need to be slow cooked or simmered. You don't use a microwave or a pressure cooker to have a good stew or, or, or to make a good pasta sauce or something. You need to, to, um, to use a slow cooker. You don't need to use a, uh, I don't know. Yeah. A microwave. I know microwave, we love popcorn. We live in a, in an environment where we like this popcorn type world where we get it right now. We say we want it, we get it. But some things are not like that. Ideas are not like that. You have a great idea. You, you put it in the recesses of your mind or in your subconscious, you let it just stew or incubate there. So again, the second phase of creativity is the, in, the incubation period and you need to not rush it. Good creative ideas do not come through pressure cooking and creativity. Another analogy is that creativity is like a pregnant woman. Once conception comes, it's been, you know, the, the, the fetus has been, you know, her, her egg has been incubated. And then what happens during this period, you cannot rush the birth or the growth of the fetus. Can you? No, you just allow it to grow. So too with creativity, you cannot rush it. So an idea may come, but instead of trying to find a full solution for whatever that problem, that problem issue idea is, let it just sit in your subconscious. And I promise you, as you allow it to incubate, you will find that your subconscious mind would go to work. Now, if you rush it, you will, you, you will not get the answers, but if you allow it to just sit and simmer in your subconscious mind and just be still and let it mature, let the idea or whatever you want to want a solution to let it just be there and mature. And then you'll find true solution in order to be truly creative. We must be out of our minds. I know it sounds crazy, right? Yes. You must be out of your creative, your, your conscious mind and allow that idea or whatever creative creativity you want to take hold of, you must allow your subconscious mind to take hold of that. The funny thing is <clears throat> human beings primarily have access to their conscious mind. You have, you, it's very things from your conscious mind is, is ready to be spoken out and, and, and dealt with, but things in your subconscious mind, it's, it's waiting to be recalled or waiting until it finds the answer before it comes forward. And that's why sometimes we may find ourselves and you'd say, oh man, I know her name. I know her name. It's right on the tip of my tongue. But somehow you just don't get it because you're trying to force your subconscious mind to bring something back now. And it's saying, you, you can't force me. You can't force your subconscious mind. So because true creativity comes from your subconscious mind, not your conscious mind, you cannot make your subconscious mind work faster. So just allow it to mull, to stew, and then in that incubation period, the ideas would now find solutions in your subconscious mind and then it will come back. But when we, when we allow it to simmer, then our higher level of consciousness takes over again. You know, the, the word says be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, let your, your let your requests be made known when you, that's exactly what the subconscious thing is all about. I'm not sure why my eye is watering, but I will take care of it. So, um, so I'm encouraging you to not allow your conscious mind to push you or to try and grab things out of your subconscious mind because you will not allow it to get what it truly needs. The third stage, and I'll be really brief within the next few, the third stage. So the first one was preparation. The second stage was incubation. And the third stage is enlightenment. This stage is exciting. This can happen during the incubation period. Since there's no set amount of time for an idea to hatch, this enlightenment can come at any point in this stage. You may not, you may be eating, walking, falling asleep, waking, just waking up, or just suddenly a solution for an idea or question you had would just come to mind. When that happens or solutions may come when that happens, it is important that you write them down immediately. Don't evaluate them. Just write them down, accept them for what they are, a thought, an idea. And then even those that seem impractical or outrageous, please don't discard them, write it down because God can be showing you possible answers to whatever issue you're dealing with. Here's my story. And this is really, really true. What I can do, I, I wanted to 
impact my I want to impact my community as I'm doing now with this program and I kept thinking God how can I do more to impact my community and I kept thinking and nothing would come up and I'm thinking man there's you know they have everything they need and guess what many times we feel that way like the community has everything they need they don't need me and I kept thinking about it I prayed about it and I just let it sit in the back of my mind I had many ideas and thoughts and I kept thinking, well, they already have this or something like this. They don't need this. Maybe not. Nothing took traction or I didn't have peace about it. And that's really important. Having peace about what the ideas that come to you is really critical because the word says that God gives us peace when we make the right decision. So that's really important. So early one morning after meditation, I just had an idea. It seems so outrageous so so big but i was just so excited it was like it was like a light bulb that came on i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh could this be the answer guess what what came to mind was you want to impact your community start a leadership institute i'm like what where did that come from i mean god a leadership institute ah, 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 ah. so many thoughts came to mind so again i allowed what I wanted, the idea I had, I allowed it just to simmer. And then this thought came about starting a leadership institute. And I was like, this is crazy. But it shouldn't be just the same as any, like a school. No, 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 no. It should be a leadership institute that's different, that helps people build communication and leadership skills and job skills and life skills and start and do it where you're able to teach children from seven years old into adulthood and I, heard, I, was, I thought to myself this is an amazing idea there's nothing like this so I, I i wrote it down and i started to think god is this really you i had perfect peace as a matter of fact more than peace i had excitement about it so what did i do i wrote it down and i looked into it further and i eventually looked up to see if there was anything like it around there's nothing like it around and then I said, okay, I'm going to run with this idea. This was truly like a light bulb, even during the, in, the incubation stage. And I was thinking, I can help people. I can do this. I can, I can, you know, share communication and leadership skills, skills that build character, integrity, and a good attitude. I can help them use their most valuable asset. I can help them recognize that their greatest investment is not in a house or car, but in themselves. I can help them develop skills that they'd use for life and, and help them live with passion and purpose. All of this came within the incubation uh, period. There were no questions as to if this was the right thing to do. That's how ideas come. And that's when you know that this is the right idea for the right time. So again, uh, you, want to, you want to, one, be prepared. Two, let it simmer. Let it incubate. And then just don't rush your ideas. So number four stage of, of our creativity is evaluation. So in the incubation and evaluate, in my case, my story I just shared with you, I was going through the incubation and I, I, always, I was also dealing with the evaluation part of it too. Is this the right thing for this area? Is this the right thing for this time? So evaluation is basically evaluating the idea you just got to see if it's credible, to analyze it, to give it, is this the right thing? Let your, and again, let your subconscious mind go to work and, and write down the different questions you have about it, analyze it, evaluate it, ask other people about it, and then it will, the, the right answers will come to your conscious mind and you'll be able to make a right decision. Stage five of this creativity is the implementation of your idea. Do you know that many people may have an idea, be creative, find a creative solution, go through all these stages, and when they get to the implementation stage, their idea die. Why? Because we don't quite know what to do, how to go about implementing ideas when you get it. Next week, we'll deal a little more about that, but I I, I wanted to quickly talk, uh, talk about what I did. In my implementation stage, what I did was I looked into my inner circle, People who I trusted to give me right to, to give me answers, not what I want to hear, but what they think is right for this season, for this time, for this location. So I spoke with them and they gave me good counsel. And then guess what? 
I registered Breakthrough Leadership Institute. So soon you'll be hearing more about Breakthrough Leadership Institute. And you know, the first what the first set of classes, we'll talk more about that later. Oh, by the way, if you want to support Breakthrough, I really hope you do. It's something that's worth supporting. So you, you can support it by cash apping dollar sign P the, the, the letter P the number four purpose P for purpose. That's my cash app name P for purpose to help breakthrough and breakthrough leadership Institute help many other people. It's a nonprofit. So, you know, you're blessing, you'll be, you'll be blessing many people. So again, in my, I'm still working through my implementation implementation state of my idea, but I'm telling you that the one thing that's required to really move an idea from an idea to implementation and seeing it come to pass is faith. You cannot buy faith. You cannot, uh, Pay, you, know, you, you, you cannot expect fate or borrow fate. Fate must come from within you. And another way to spell fate I have found is R-I-S-K. When you take a risk, generally you're having faith that what you're risking will come to pass. So don't be afraid to take risk. It may make you feel nervous about the, the implementation state. Yes, it's, a, it's risky, but run with it. The, 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 the rewards are so great, it's worth doing. Remember that your prayer, your imagination is more important than money and knowledge. I'll say that again. Your thoughts, your, your prayer, you praying and imagining is more important than money or knowledge. The word tells us that too. It's more what you ask or think, right? So you're thinking and you asking or praying are on the same level and asking and praying or asking and thinking has nothing to do with money or knowledge. Okay. So brief, brief recap of today's program. Prepar the stages of creativity are to prepare, prepare your mind, have a question, one question, one thing. Don't try and dump 10 things and try to get answers for 10 of them at one time. Think about one solution you want for one problem. Prepare yourself by believing that your idea for whatever solution you want is possible. Believe that it's possible because if you don't believe it will not come to pass. The other thing is to know that there's an incubation period where you just allow the idea or the problem to sit in your subconscious and not try and rush the answer out. Don't rush. You cannot rush your subconscious and, and you, you need to allow your idea to simmer, marinate, mature before it come, before solutions come. The, 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 the third stage is enlightenment. So you have this idea, you just have it in your subconscious and then boom, like a light bulb, you, you find you, you have the answer. You then what happens? You write it down, write it down quickly. Don't, don't, don't lose it. It's really, really critical because the enlightenment part and the answers that come, if you don't write them down. You may miss, forget, or not be able to solve your problem because you didn't write them down. And as you're doing it, be thankful because literally God is answering your prayer, your thought, your subconscious mind is doing what it, what he wanted it, well, what he wanted it to do and bringing answers to you. So be thankful, be excited about it. And the fourth stage is evaluation. Let your conscious mind review, evaluate, and analyze the pros and cons of the potential uh, answer you got or, or, or the evaluate the potential for success, basically, as you evaluate the idea, the, the, uh, the enlightenment or the results of whatever idea you were thinking about. And five is implementation. I'm going to talk some more about implementation next week because many people get stuck on this spot and I'll walk through my challenge, my idea with you. So you'll see what I'm talking about as far as the, the challenges to face and how to deal with them. Next week, I will wrap this series up. But before I go, I'd like to pray and I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you use the tips, tools, and insights that we share on this program to break through, to stir up the gift of creativity, the ideas that God has deposited in you, in you and your family to solve the challenges of your life. I pray that you will impact this world with your presence, with your, with God's purpose and God's love, and that you'll impact it with the gratitude of God in you. Father, I pray that you help us to live and lead with passion and purpose as we choose to live with character, integrity, and a good attitude. We just want to say thank you for all 
who will share this program and be a blessing to this program. Thank you, oh God, for helping us. And as we go, Father, help us to trust you our creator with all of our heart and not depend on what we know or our own understanding, but help us to seek you and to seek your help and directions in all we do, knowing that you will show us what to do and how to become more creative to be who you've called us to be. And we ask all these things in Jesus name. So until next week on Breakthrough, when we'll close up this program on keys to creativity and, and, Primarily, how to use your creativity, meaning the ideas that are in you, to earn money. How to monetize your ideas. So again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for keeping this program in your prayer and encouraging others to join us next week as well. Have a fantastic week and don't forget, live and live with passion for your purpose. Have a great week.